Okay, guys, welcome. How's everybody doing? Welcome. How's everybody doing? Yeah, I'm Sheikh Hassan Spirit. Yeah, there was like a 20 second delay in Jesus Almighty name. Yeah, I'll be following some spirit. Oh my goodness, this guy went live too. Okay, welcome everybody. How you doing? As you <clears throat> realize already, we're on StreamYard, which means the only negative thing about StreamYard is that there's like 20 second delay approximately when I say something and it reaches you. So what I do is, instead of being on my stream yard, watching your comments, I'm actually on my YouTube channel because I get to see your comments <clears throat> to what I said something 20 seconds earlier. So bear with me because there's plenty of advantages using stream yard. It's very advantageous using stream yard because with stream yard, we can, <clears throat> pop up the articles and you can see the articles. It helps with visual aid. You can see the quotations, right? <clears throat> and I can actually <clears throat> highlight a question or a comment for everyone to see. So StreamYard has advantages in that it helps with visualization, visual aids. You can see the questions or the comments <clears throat> or the references. So that's why StreamYard is good. But the disadvantage of StreamYard is when I say something and reaches you, there's about 20 seconds, so I have to wait. So we have Protestant Believer who will be joining us. I want you to just thank all the mods. Pray for them. You thank them by praying for them. Ask the Lord Jesus to bless them for their service. Nobody gets paid helping me to help you, right? <clears throat> Sadly, you know, we don't have an organization where we're fully funded, where we can hire people, like the case of some organizations like Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, right? So we have brothers and sisters who take time out of their own busy schedules, who have families, in cases they're working. They do this out of their love for Jesus Christ. And because they love Jesus, they do this out of love for the church of Jesus Christ. And their reward is with the Lord Jesus. Their reward is Jesus Christ. Their reward is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Now, before I pray, before I ask the Lord to bless this session and to reinvigorate me and energize me because I am tired because I went, did my daily cardio, keep praying for me and your love and mercy that the Lord Jesus will keep empowering me with complete, perfect self-discipline to keep <clears throat> getting healthier for his glory, not for vanity. May the Lord Jesus save me from that and to keep my daughters healthy. And if the Lord tarries, I see them grow up. And I leave to be with the Lord before they do. Ya Alim Sheikh. And I pray that for all of you with your children. They fall in love with the Lord and you leave before anything happens to them if the Lord Jesus tarries. So I'm kind of tired, famished, but our strength, our energy comes from the Holy Spirit, the eternal spirit of the Father and the Son. Now, I want to share this link. Prophet Google, do me a favor. We need to upload this to bring attention to it. Somali Christian TV have posted the threat by the Somali Muslims. There's the link, guys. Let me give it to you again. Somali Christian TV. It's about 7 minutes, 33 seconds. Here it is. Make this video go viral. Upload, upload the video. Bring worldwide attention to what Muslims try to do. If they can't refute us intellectually, which they can't, they'll threaten us. And if they can, they will murder us and rape our women and enslave our children. May the Lord Jesus destroy Islam, eradicate the name of Muhammad, and save Muslims from their demonization. Their prophet was demonized. He's in hell right now. And I have to explain why do I keep referring to Muhammad being in hell? Because in a broader, inclusive sense, we use the term hell to refer to the place where the souls, the spirits of disembodied believers enter and they await the day of judgment and they wait in a dimension of torment where they're being tormented until the Lord Jesus summons their soul spirits out of that place of torment, reunites them to their physical bodies and stand before the Lord Jesus in judgment 
where then he will show them why they deserve everlasting destruction and then destroy them, body and soul, in hell. Lord willing, I've done sessions on this. I have posts on this on my blog. But if the Lord Jesus wills, maybe sometime this week or next week, I'll explain the fate of the wicked when they die. Where do they go? Because we don't believe in soul sleep. We don't believe the Holy Bible teaches soul sleep. We believe that the soul, the spirit of a person, continues to exist separately from the physical body. When the physical body dies and returns to the dust, plenty of biblical support for that. And now we have medical science confirming what the Bible already revealed to those who believe the Bible as God's word. You know, you have over, what is it, 30 million reported near-death and out-of-body experiences. And there has been studies done by doctors, medical experts who are not Christians, who have concluded consciousness is something separate from the brain. So when the brain dies and the heart dies, those who have experienced brain death, heart death, and they're just dead, they still continue to experience conscious existence. They don't call it a soul. And these are findings not by committed Christians, but doctors in the medical field, some of whom are not even Christians. So science is playing catch up to what the Bible always taught, contrary to those who pervert scripture, to teach soul sleep like Joe's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists. Anyway, Lord willing, I will do a discussion on that maybe sometime next week. So now we may be joined by a brother. Man Broody, is it? I'm waiting for Man Broody to show up because he needed further clarification on Jesus' knowledge of the hour. So I told him to show up. He's going to call me. I'll bring him on StreamYard, and I'll answer his question thoroughly. Because for those of you who don't know, I was on El Fadi's channel last night. Thanks to our brother, Prophet Google, who's working tirelessly, tirelessly, as the Holy Spirit saves me from stammering and stuttering, and strengthens my voice and invigorates my voice with power, and make my voice pleasing to your ears, and may the Holy Spirit fill my throat and my lungs and my chest and my heart and art arteries with health, the health I need to glorify the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please, Holy Spirit, save me from stammering and confusion and recall scriptures and interpret them perfectly for your people who are gathered. Illuminate our minds and our hearts for the glory of Jesus Christ. We need you, Holy Spirit. Prophet Google is working tirelessly, effortlessly, so much so that he actually uploaded a video that was already on my channel by Jai. That's how much he's doing for the channel. The Lord Jesus bless him, right? He's an, he's an amazing blessing to the Lord. But we don't want the same video posted again. Because the first time was posted, I think we had, what, over 10,000 people? But Prophet Google needs attention. So he deleted the older one so you can watch the one he uploaded. So he gets the credit. Oh, yeah. I'm just keeping it 100 with you, bro. I'm just keeping it 100. You know what I'm saying? No, but anyway, he's a tremendous blessing because he uploads videos faster than I'm able to make my breakfast and brush my teeth. I know that's stupid. That didn't make sense. Anyway, he uploads videos, so God bless him. Thank the Lord Jesus for him. And he's doing some marvelous <clears throat> productions. You see the clips that he produces catching Muslims in their lies and their blasphemies and their filth. Also, these cartoon productions that he does, phenomenal work. Pray for his health. Pray for his support. The Lord Jesus support him and provide his daily bread. Pray for his holiness and purity and pray that for all of us to be in love with Jesus Christ. He was able to upload my session with Al Fadi yesterday where I answered a question about Jesus not knowing the dare hour. So someone watched it. By the way, Robbie, Rodriguez, we don't say LMAO. LMAO will get you a, a ban or a block. There is no LMAO here. Okay? We say LMBO, laugh my buttocks off. But we don't say LMAO unless you're saying laugh Muhammad's aspirations off. So be careful. So brother watched it, still didn't fully comprehend. 
So I'm wondering if he's here. Because if he's here, I'll take him first. If not, I'm going to block him. Because I retitled this session, Jesus' Knowledge of the Hour, thinking he's going to show up and he's going to call so I can help him understand the passage more thoroughly. And he's not here. Well, guess what, brother? You're going to get blocked for that. Oh, yeah. You got to get blocked. Because you made me retitle the session. You made me retitle the session. So thinking that you would call and I would help you understand the issue. And you're not here. Now we got this guy, Joseph, leaving me a voice message. Let's see what he's saying. Hold on. Hello, brother. I think something went wrong yesterday with the voice record that I sent it. Okay, okay. Praise the God. All right. He was just saying, I like his accent, though. All right, brother. I don't know if he's going to show up. Hopefully he does. If not, I have to block him because this session today was going to be on the black stone being Islam's other ilah, the other God of Islam, Islam's savior. Don't let Muslims lie and deceive you. Islam has multiple gods, divine beings, divine persons, and saviors, one of which is the black stone. That is Islam's other ilah, other God, other deity besides Allah, and their savior. And I'm going to prove that from the authentic Muslim sources. And I want to talk about Enoch's son of man, but for the sake of this brother, I thought I'd help him. And as I answer... <clears throat> his questions and help him understand the issue that would also be a blessing to you and he's not here all right man broody i think his name is oh sovereign lord have mercy well that's it let me just pray and ask the lord to bless us because i am tired and i don't want to be frustrated i ask the lord jesus save me save me from being unnecessarily offensive and causing people to stumble as people have been causing me to stumble yahovah father so let me wash us in the blood of my god and save the lord jesus christ Yehovah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' almighty name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Abba. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please replenish my body. Reinvigorate my body rejuvenate my body <clears throat> refresh us <clears throat> regenerate us flood us in your love and your presence and your power and your strength and the energy that comes from you because you're the almighty god possessing infinite power <clears throat> purify us in the blood of the lamb the lord jesus strengthen us especially me because i need your strength holy spirit I'm physically tired, but I ask, Holy Spirit, that you make us whole and heal us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically, because we are damaged. Damaged because of the sin that Adam and Eve introduced into the world. Damaged because of our backgrounds, being raised in broken homes, being raised in the midst of sinners. Damaged because of our own sinfulness and rebellion. And we need to be made whole by the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Feed us the flesh and give us to drink the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. And I pray that for our loved ones, my daughters, save them from damage and fill us for the glory of Jesus Christ. Make my voice powerful and passionate and strong and pleasing to the ears of those who hear. Even though I dislike it, it doesn't matter what I think. And please strengthen my throat with life from your presence so I can use my voice to glorify Jesus, to never shame Jesus or dishonor Jesus, and illuminate our minds and our hearts, understand the depth of Scripture, to feast on the meat of Scripture. Save me from error and stammering and confusion and stuttering, please, and perfect my ability to recall the Scriptures for the glory of Jesus Christ. Take over this session. Take over our lives. Take over the lives of our loved ones. My daughters, we belong to you. All we own is yours, Holy Spirit, and bless the Internet connection. 
and save us from attacks of these blasphemous dogs. Silence them and muzzle them. Strike terror in their hearts and use us to be your agents to glorify Jesus Christ. We need you, Holy Spirit, not just for the session. We need you every day because you are the perfect gift, the perfect teacher, the sanctifier sent by the Father and the Son to seal us for the glory of Jesus. Without you, we will deny Jesus. Without you, we will fail Jesus. Without you, we will dishonor the Lord Jesus. But in you, by your power, we will love Jesus even unto death. So we yield to you. Never let us blaspheme, deny, and betray the Lord Jesus Christ or dishonor him. Please, Holy Spirit. We know the Son is your internal companion, whom you love and adore. And you are the eternal Spirit of the Father, whom <clears throat> you love and adore. And the Father and the Son love and adore you. And the Son loves and adores the Father as the Father loves and adores the Son. Perfect union and perfect love among the members of the Godhead. May we reflect that perfect love among ourselves for one another by the power that comes from you, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus Christ, the Father's Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. King Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Now, I guess Gianna had a question related to the Trinity. Is Man Broody here? I think that's his name, Man Broody. Yeah, the demons are manifesting. The sons of the devil, Muhammad's father, are manifesting. Let me see something. Gianna had asked a question. I am a Noahite. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Gianna here. Why would you tell her? Here, Gianna, I want to dialogue with you. Here, get, come come on my, you're a Noahite, so you betrayed Jesus to follow a false religion. Why would you tell her this is not the time? Actually, it is the time. I want her to come on. Hold on. Here, Gianna, click on it. Come, we're going to have a dialogue. Have your Tanakh ready. Hold on. I didn't know that she's a Noahite. She goes, she was a Trinitarian? Here, Gianna, here's the link. Click on it, join me. Yeah, cool, Musa, I'll try to answer it. Gianna, you left the true God for a fake God, for a satanic God, sadly. <clears throat> okay. Noahite, they followed the laws of Noah because the rabbis deceived them. The rabbis deceived them and brainwashed them. By the way, Prophet Google, upload the video from Somali Christian TV so we can bring more attention to it. And guys, upload their videos. Whose voice are you going to use? Your mother's voice, Gianna? So you're not going to use your voice. You're going to use your mother's voice? Okay, have your mother talk for you. Come on. Are you ashamed of your faith? Might I use my voice? Anyway, come on in. We're waiting. Maybe you can get a ventriloquist to speak through you. Anyway, I'm waiting for her. We'll wait for her to call. Get Man Broody too, guys. See if he's around. If not, we're going to go into the Black Stone. Gijana, I'm waiting. Don't waste my time. You brought up a question. Call me. So hopefully God will illuminate you to repent of your satanic belief. If you're not, I'm going to get rid of you, sister. We don't have time to play. Come on. We're waiting. You're wasting my time. Sorry, guys. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Like a coward, you run. Yeah. What a coward. Yeah, run. Run to your satanic God who can't hear you like the prophets of Baal. Coward. Anyway, there you go. All right. I don't know where Man Broody is. He's not showing up. So we're going to go into the discussion. Let me bring up. What's up, brother? Okay, thank you. All right. All right, let me bring this guy in. You there? Man Broody, I hope you're watching yeah, this. I hope what Man Broody's watching it later because I'm going to have to block you, buddy. Let me see if I can block him now. Hold on. Because that's the heart of disrespect. He asked me a question. I tell him to come on. He said he will, and he's not here. How disrespectful, man. Anyway. <sighs> let me see. Let me get there with this guy. Sorry about that, brother. Anyway, I'm going to give you a link. We're going to change the topic. What a guy, dude. Let me find them, guys, in the comment section. 
how disrespectful to my time. I'm trying to reach out to you to help you. You said you're going to be on. You make me even retitle the session, and you don't have the decency to show up. What disrespect? Here. Yeah, it's man bro dude 23. Man bro dude 23. Okay. And you don't show up, man? All right. All right, I got to get rid of you, man. That's the height of disrespect. You ask me for clarification. I'm willing to retitle the session and take time away from what the topic of the session was to help you. And you know I'm going to be on, and I told you, and you don't show up. Man, bro, dude, 23. All right, don't come back to my channel, dude. It's people like that that causes me to sin. May the Lord Jesus forgive me sanctify me and give me the grace to be patient as he's patient with me in jesus name what a stumbling block pathetic anyway guys i'm sorry all right brother let me get you the link by the way take a moment look in the description box look in the description box i posted a slew of articles and rebuttals some of the articles are going to be pertinent to our discussion here I had posted links discussing why the Lord Jesus did not know the day or hour. How can that be the case if he's God in the flesh? And in three of the links, they are thorough rebuttals to Shibir Ali, Sami Zatri, and another Mohammedan named Smith. Last name was Smith. As I said a while back, if you remember, before YouTube and Facebook, when you wanted to respond to someone, you had to do it via written response through written <clears throat> rebuttals. And so in 1999, when I began full-time ministry, serving the Lord full-time, not that he needs me, and writing for Answering Islam, I would engage all the top Muslim apologists and websites and write thorough refutations. So there you will see three very in-depth rebuttals to Shibrali, Sami Zatri, and someone named Smith. Again, his full name is there. Last name is Smith. A revert to Islam where they were trying to refute the Trinity, trying to refute that Jesus is the God-man, and proving that Jesus couldn't be God because he didn't know the dare hour. If you take the time and read through those rebuttals slowly, simmer over them, Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand what you're reading, right? Not just read, but read with understanding so you don't miscommunicate, misrepresent what you read or hear. I promise you, you'll be the better for it because there is stakes in those rebuttals. Not just meat, but stakes in those rebuttals because they are thorough refutations to the attacks on the Trinity, deity of Christ, by going in-depth in the Bible, bringing out the plethora of biblical proofs for the Trinity, the deity of Christ is humanity, and then turning the tables against these Mohammedans and using their own objections to destroy Allah and proving Allah is a false god, using their own <clears throat> criteria to do so. So those links will give you steaks and dessert, but they're quite long. That means you're going to need to sacrifice time from binge-watching Netflix or HBO Max or Amazon Prime and spend more time reading these articles or watching or re-watching the sessions. However, sessions and articles are not a replacement for Bible study and meditation. The Bible is God's perfect word. The Bible is the inspired inerrant, infallible voice of God. And it's the Bible where Jesus speaks to you, makes himself known, so you can fall more in love with Jesus, know him more intimately, and live for him more passionately. So you do not take away time from the Bible. You study the Bible, meditate on its words, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand what you're reading and live the Bible out in the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus. So do not sacrifice studying the Bible for studying the articles or watching the sessions, okay? Obviously, prayer, Hannah, that, that shouldn't even be stated. That's obvious. Even a blind man will know you must pray. But I'm not talking about prayer now. I'm talking about reading, right? You don't 
read a prayer unless you have a prayer that's written out that you're going to read as a way of praying that prayer. Typically, prayer is just something you do either because you've memorized certain prayers or you just pray from your heart as the Holy Spirit moves you to cry out to God with your own words. That's why I was saying Bible. I'm not talking about prayer now. Yes, there are prayers that you read aloud, but you're trying to get to the point where those prayers that you read aloud, aloud, you then memorize, and those prayers become second nature and part of your spiritual DNA so that you don't have to have the text in front of you to read out the prayer because you've memorized it, like our Lord's Prayer or the Apostles' Creed. See my point? Of course you must pray. Of course you must have fellowship with God through prayer, speaking to God, telling Him that you love Him, thanking Him for who He is, thanking Him for the blessings in your life, and also opening up your heart and telling Him how you feel, all the things you're going through and your struggles and why you need your Father to love you and preserve you in union with Jesus Christ by the power of the Spirit. That's a given. Because if you don't talk to your Father, right, and you don't hear from your Father, then that means you are not truly in love with your father and you're paying him lip service and you're not a true Christian, you're a fake. You get my point? It's like marriage. If you don't spend time with your spouse, communicating to your spouse, affirming your spouse, appreciating your spouse, opening your heart to your spouse, and if you don't let your spouse communicate to you and you don't listen to her or him and show concern when they come to you with their concerns, then the message you're communicating to your spouse, you're a liar, you don't love them, and your marriage will eventually fail because God describes his relationship to us as a husband to a wife. And just like the husband wants attention from his wife, the wife wants attention from her husband. And God is a perfect loving husband who wants to just flood you in his love and give you all the attention in the world. It's not God's fault that you're not paying attention to the attention he wants to lavish on you and the love that he wants to just flood, flood you in and fill you with. But then he wants you to speak to him. It's a relationship. So how do you speak to God? How do you get intimate with God? Through prayer, through singing praises. How do you show God that you love him and care for him and want to hear from him? By studying his word and meditating on his word because that's his voice. So I hope that's clear. Right? I don't mean to get in a rant. I don't, mean, I don't mean to put you to sleep. I hope that when I say something, that's from the Holy Spirit prompting me to speak. Because I want the Holy Spirit to guide the session in any direction he wants. Because if it's from the Spirit, we will be blessed. If it's from my flesh, then no one will benefit. Father, Holy Spirit, we love you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now. Yes, you do have time, Gianna. Stop it, Gianna. Don't tell me, Gianna, you don't have time for the most important issue in your life. Your everlasting salvation. There's nothing more important than your everlasting salvation. So don't tell me you don't have time now. If you don't have time, then why are you here listening? If you're here listening, that means you do have time. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here listening. Right? The most important question, Gianna, is your everlasting salvation. Where you will go. And how do you know where you're going to go? And I'm letting you know by embracing the Noahite heresy, you're on your way to hell with those rabbis who are burning in hell with Muhammad who are under the feet of Jesus. So don't tell me you don't have time. Make time for your everlasting salvation. Here it is. Here's my Skype again, Link. Don't give me that. If you're here, that means you have time. Don't give me that. Call me. And if you're sincere and you have sincere questions, I'm not going to belittle you. But if you come here to mock and attack and ridicule, make excuses, then you're wasting our time. Anyway. So wait, go for freedom. Let me, let me, let me get. 
your point. So I'm here to entertain you and make you laugh and amuse you. So that means you're not here to be educated, to know who the true God is, to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more faithfully. You're here to be entertained so I can make you laugh. Is that what you're saying? Go for freedom. Is that what you're saying? Let me just get what you're saying. Because I have a disease called blockolitis. And doctors told me it's incurable. The only one that can cure it, obviously God Almighty can cure anything. But there is no medication, no cure for blockolitis. So I'm just, uh, just want to make sure. So I'm here to entertain you. You're here for entertainment. So instead of watching comedy or going to the movies, you come here so I can make you laugh, right? It's like that scene from Goodfellas, right? When I'm here to amuse you. You know, my blockolitis is about to kick in. My blockolitis. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. All right. Anyway. All right, anyway. All right, brother, are we ready? You there, Van Loser? I guess he's not here. Are you there? Van Loser, I can't hear you. I am, I am, I want to get him in and next to you. I am, I am. Van Loser. I keep calling Protestant believer and he's ignoring me. Are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, there we go. Hello? Can you hear are me you now? there? Van Hello? Loser, are you there? Hello? 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 Can you hear me now? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm right here. Can you hear me? Man, see, this guy, see, he just wants to ignore me. Hello, 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 hello. Where can you are hear you, me? man? Why can't we hear you? you Where are you, me? man? I'm speaking. Man. Hold on. Wait oh, a second. Psych, I could hear you all this time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I got you, sucker. Suck in a Oh, you just wait, man. Yeah, well, I got you, man. It's like what I did to that. that it's what I did to that sister yesterday. Remember when I said, you want me to block you now? She started freaking out. <laughs> you remember that in yesterday's session? Uh -huh, like, yeah. When I said, hey, mm -hmm. you want me to block you now? And I said, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, she, oh, oh, and she had that nervous laugh, laugh that poor sister. Anyway, okay, let uh, me get you the link. Uh, I forgot what link it is, too. All right, let's talk about Islam's Blackstone Idol. What Ed is going to do. Our brother in the Lord, he's going to share the screen. All the articles that I'm referencing, you'll find the links to them in the description box. So, guys, take a moment. Look at the description box to this session. It's all there. Upload them, translate them, make clips out of them. I sound like a broken record. I'm getting tired for you. Now I'm going to show you that Islam is from the pit of hell because Islam is not monotheistic. It's not the religion of the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it does not teach this Islamic concept of Tawheed. Islam is polytheistic, paganism, because the Muslim sources posit multiple gods, multiple divine beings, if not multiple divine persons, and that Islam has elevated a black stone, which was a stone venerated by the pagans before Muhammad, has now venerated that black stone, and elevated it to the level of an ilaha, a god that is the savior of Muslims. And here's the article. So I'm going to give it to the brother. He's going to then share it on the screen. And we're going to navigate through this. Hold on. Let me send it to private. Here it is. All right. You can see that, brother? Yeah, yeah. All right. When he puts it up, we're going to put it up for you. Because, see, visual aid helps. Visual aid helps. So you're going to see. We're going to go to my article, but then we're going to click. And he's going to enlarge it for us. See see what a blessing these mods are, and they don't get paid for it. They wait for me to get paid. We'll, pay, we'll all be panhandling. Anyway, he's going to enlarge it. This is the article. Now, 
what we're going to do, we're going to click on the links to the hadiths that are online, right? So that you can read it for yourself. Now, is that, I don't know, I can't even see it. Is that as large as it gets? It's okay. If that, and then I'll just go to the site. But as long as they can see, because I'm my site is bad anyway. Do you want me to pull you out? No, but that's not going to enlarge the screen. That ain't going to do anything. I forgot. That's not going to do anything. Okay, so we're trying to get a good size where you guys can see. We know Adam Seeker. I know you're seeking attention. Okay, Adam, you need attention? He goes, uh, zoom more. All right. Is that big enough for you guys? Or no? I just want to make sure. Can you guys read it? Sorry for the delay. Invite more folks. Okay, is that good enough? Remember, we're doing it for you. If you can read what's there, then we'll begin. If you can't read, we'll enlarge it. Can you enlarge it a little more or no? Let's see. That's it, man. That's All right, that's it. That's perfect. Okay. Now, what you I want you to do, brother, scroll down a little bit. Okay. You see where it says grade daif? Daif, click on the link, sunan.com, because that's going to now take you to the website. In the article, I link to sunnah.com or other online Muslim sources so that you can then read for yourself, read for yourself that we're not misquoting, we're not twisting, we're not fabricating, we're not forging anything. Okay. Humayd bin Abu Sawiya said, okay, let's read, guys. Humayd bin Abu Sawiya said, I heard, I heard Ibn Hisham asking Ata bin Abu Rabba. By the way, can you see the print? Is that as large as we can get it? I don't know why to the right. Oh, yeah, you have it translated. Okay, yeah, that's even better. Okay. I heard Ibn Hisham asking Atta bin Abu Rabba about the Yemenite corner, Yemenite corner when he was performing tawaf around the house. Atta said, Abu Huraira told me that the Prophet said, 70 angels have been appointed over it. Whoever says, so oh, read the Arabic. Let's read the English. Oh Allah, I ask you for pardon and well-being in this world and in the hereafter. Our Lord, give us good in this world and good in the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. They say, Amin. When he reached the black corner, pay attention here, guys. When he reached the black corner where the black stone is, he said, Oh, Abu Muhammad, what have you heard about the black this black corner? Atta said, Abu Huraira told me that he heard the Messenger of Allah say, Whoever faces it is facing the hand of the most merciful. Did you catch it? Whoever faces it is facing the hand of of the most merciful. That's why my article is titled, Allah Extends a Hand. According to these traditions attributed to Muhammad, the black stone idol is Allah's right hand on earth. If you touch it, you're touching the hand of Allah. If you kiss it, you touch it, you're basically shaking the, the hand of Allah, according to the Muslim sources. Okay? Ibn Hisham said to him, O Abu Muhammad, what about Tawaf? Atta said, oh, Abu Huraira told me that he heard the Prophet say, whoever performs Tawaf around the house seven times and does not say anything except glory is to Allah, praises to Allah, none has the right to be worshipping but Allah, and there is no power nor strength except with Allah. Ten bad deeds will be erased from him, ten merits will be recorded for him, and he'll be raised ten degrees in status. Whoever performs Tawaf, 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 and talks when he is in that situation is Waiting in mercy like one who wades in water. Whoever performs the tawaf around the house seven times and does not say anything except glories to Allah, praises to Allah. None has the right to be worshiping but Allah. And there is no power nor strength except with Allah. Ten bad deeds will be erased from him. Ten merits will be recorded for him. And he'll be raised in ten degrees in status. Whoever performs tawaf and talks when he's in that situation is waiting in mercy like one who wades in water. Again, wow, talk about reputation. Ooh, this is tiring. <laughs> Whoever performs tawaf around the house seven times and does not say anything except <clears throat> glory is to Allah, praises to Allah. None has the right to be worshiping, 
but Allah. And there is no power, no strength except with Allah. Ten bad deeds will be erased from him. Ten merits will be recorded for him. And he will be raised ten degrees in status. Whoever performs tawaf and talks when he is in that situation is waiting in mercy like one who wades in water. And there is no power nor strength except with Allah. Ten bad deeds will be erased for him. Ten merits will be recorded for him. And he will be raised ten degrees in status. Man, bro, does this end? It's like never-ending insanity, never-ending incoherent unintelligibility. Okay, let's let's finish it so that Muslims don't say we're just quoting a part of it. Whoever performs tawaf and talks when he's in that situation is waiting in mercy like one who wades in water. There is no power nor strength except with Allah. Ten bad deeds will be erased from him. Ten merits will be recorded for him. And he'll be raised ten degrees in status. Whoever performs tawaf and talks when he's in that situation is waiting in mercy like one who wades in water. Man, that helped my insomnia. Now let's see the grading. If you can go down. Yeah, that's because it's translating the Arabic for you. Okay, notice. Grade, da'if, brother. Da'if. It's weak. Sunan Ibn Majah. The English translation, volume 4, book 25, hadith 2957. Now, if you go back to my article, now that we quoted the entire hadith so that Muslims don't accuse us of misquoting, in my article, I only quote the relevant portion. Okay? Notice, go up a little bit so they can see what I quoted. Okay, there you go. When he reached Ruqan Aswad, the black stone, he said, Oh, Abu Muhammad, what command has reached you regarding this black stone? Atta said, Abu Huraira related to me that he heard Allah's messenger saying, He who touches it, in fact, touches the hand of the merciful. And I gave you the grading so people don't think I'm misquoting. Daif. Now, I will show you that there are other reports that are stated to be Sahih Hassan. Sahih sound from Ibn Abbas, Hassan good from Muhammad. Now, before we do that, let's unpack the implication. Notice that Muhammad is exhorting his followers to perform tawaf, circumambulation around the Kaaba seven times. Did you read that? Run around the Kaaba seven times. Circumambulate the Kaaba seven times. Okay? And as you do that, this is part of Hajj, pilgrimage. It's also part of lesser pilgrimage known as Umrah. As you do that, if you can, make sure to touch the black stone. If not, kiss it. I've already done previous sessions. And in... This post, I link to articles where I quote Bukhari and others where Muhammad used to kiss the black stone, touch the black stone, and weep over it. In fact, a hadith in Bukhari Muslim narrates that Omar ibn al-Khattab, Omar ibn al-Khattab, when he went to kiss the black stone, he started speaking to it. He says, I know that you're a stone that neither can harm nor benefit. Neither can harm nor benefit. Had I not seen, had I not seen the Messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. You got it? Even Omar did not understand why Muhammad ordained on his followers to kiss, smother, touch the black stone. Okay. So what did Abu Huraira say? Abu Huraira said that he heard Muhammad tell him that the reason why you kiss the black stone or touch the black stone is because it's Allah's hand. And when you touch the black stone, you're touching the hand of Allah. Now, we got problems, Muslims, because according to the Muslim tradition, the pagans would run around the Kaaba seven times. Something Muhammad enjoined upon you Muslims to do till this day. And the pagans would touch the black stone and kiss it. Something Muhammad enjoined upon all Muslims till this day that they must do if they're going to perform pilgrimage, which is known as Hajj, or the lesser pilgrimage known as Umrah, to Mecca, which every Muslim is obligated to do so once in their lifetime if they can afford it. Now, let me explain to you why the pagans did it. Are you guys ready? I hope you're 
alert, attentive. I'm not putting you to sleep with this because we're going to kill several birds with one stone. We're going to destroy Islam by the power of Jesus Christ, proving it's a religion from Satan, and glorify Jesus as God's son, which he truly is. Okay? Where'd you go, brother? What was that? Anyway, the reason why the pagans ran around the Kaaba seven times, this is something admitted by Muslims like Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Abdullah Yusuf Ali in his English translation and commentary of the Quran. Now, he's since deceased, right? He produced a Quran translation commentary in the early part of the 20th century. He mentions in an appendix, which I cite in my rebuttals and in my articles, that the pagans in Arabia, the pagans in Arabia, Mecca and Medina, believe there were seven planets. Guys, you got to pay attention here. I hope I'm not boring you with this. Believe there were seven planets. The sun and the moon, which they counted as two planets, and then five other planets. And they believe the moon was the chief god because the moon was the planet that symbolized their chief god because their chief god is a male deity. The sun represented the consort of the moon because the sun represented the goddess, the female god, right? And then their offspring, the five planets. So the reason why they would run around the Kaaba seven times, they did so in honor of their gods and goddesses and ran around the Kaaba seven times, one time for each of the seven planets. So if there were seven planets, they would run around it seven times. They would <clears throat> perform tawaf for the moon and then for the sun and then five other times for the other planets, all of which represented their gods and goddesses. So Muhammad took over the pagan practice, the pagan idolatrous practice of running around the Kaaba seven times for their seven gods and goddesses, each of which had a planet representing them. The moon representing the chief god, the sun representing his female consort, and the five other planets representing their offspring, right? The gods and goddesses. So why did Muhammad adopt that? Well, because he's a pagan, son of the devil. But then he tried to pass it off as rights that were instituted by Ishmael, which there is no shred of historical archaeological evidence for that assertion. Everyone clear? I hope that I didn't put you to sleep with that. Now, in my article again. Now, here it said it's daif. It's weak, brother. So it's daif. We reject it. That's what Ibn Fibbin is going to say. Now, I want you to scroll down a little further to the quote by Sufi scholar Jibril F. Haddad. Jibril F. Haddad. Now, click on where it says source so we can show them where we're getting this from. Problematic hadiths and various questions. You see it? Okay. Now, guys, the citation from my article comes from Jibril Haddad's website, Living Islam. So you see it right there. Problematic hadiths and various questions. I'm not making it up. Visual A. Thank the Lord Jesus for this technology like StreamYard. And thank the Lord Jesus for Protestant for helping me because I'm showing you where I'm getting my citations from. It doesn't say living Judaism, living Christianity, living Islam, the website of Jibril Haddad. Now let's go back to my article because it's too lengthy. So we can then quote from my article that relevant portion that I got from Jibril Haddad about the black stone, about the black stone. Go up because you're at the end, right there. Guys, notice, this comes from Jibril Haddad. Pay attention. This is meat I'm giving you to destroy Islam for the glory of Jesus, because you must destroy it, because Jesus destroyed Muhammad in hell already. Now we need to destroy this religion for the glory of Christ so that Muslims will be saved and escape the snares of the devil. Notice what Jibril Haddad says. The black stone is the right hand of Allah Most High. The black stone is the right hand of Allah Most High. Ibn Qutayba, 
in ta'wil mukhtalif al hadith and then he gives you the addition the page numbers okay said that it was a saying of ibn abbas and relates a saying of aisha that the black stone is the depository of the covenant of human souls with allah on the day of promise alastu bi rabbikum now watch this he interprets the black stone as representing the place where one declares one pledge of fidelity to the sovereign ibn hajir he's the one who did a commentary in al bukhari and fath al bari and he gives you the addition the volume and page number cites al khatabis and al muhib al tabaris similar interpretations now watch the classification of this hadith the classification of this hadith he's going to give it to you in a minute al qurtubi said in al asna fi shar asma allah al husna al qurtubi quote it means that the black stone has the standing manzila of the right hand of allah metaphorically speaking now notice the later muslim scholars embarrassed by this hadith that the black stone is allah's right hand interpreted it metaphorically they did what is known as ta'wil interpreted metaphorically and i'll explain why in a minute now notice did muhammad say it's metaphorical did ibn abbas say it's metaphorical no who's saying it the later muslim scholars are allegorizing this narration where muhammad is reported to have said the black stone is allah's right hand on earth and i'll explain why in a minute now go to the next citation brother okay if you go all the way down again to show where i'm quoting from now this one is from his book now his book you can get as a pdf file lord willing i'll find the link to the pdf file but i didn't post it because when i when i wrote this this post i forgot to look for the pdf file but anyway this comes from jibril haddad's book islamic doctrines and beliefs allah's names and attributes al asma wal sifat excerpts al bayhaqi bayhaqi right volume 4 page 27 you can find this book online as a pdf file lord willing i'll try to hunt it down now let's read what he says okay go back to the top right there okay right there ibn furaq said that he embarked on the study of kalam because the hadith reported from the prophet the black stone is allah's right hand which is mutaqallim mutaqallim explained to his satisfaction in contrast to the fuqaha now let me explain what he means here ibn furaq study kalam kalam would be a reference to the rationality or the rationalists the influence of greek rational thinking greek logic upon the muslims kalam was a reference used to describe those muslims who came under the influence of greek logic greek philosophy greek thinking greek rationalization greek rationalism right and the most famous proponents of kalam were the mutazila and under the influence of greek logic greek philosophy greek rationalism they allegorized many of the statements of the quran and narrations attributed to muhammad and they denied many of the things that muslims before them took to be actual for example the mutazilites stated the quran is not literally the speech of Allah, and therefore it is not literally uncreated. They also reason that the attributes of Allah could not be distinct from his essence, because if you say that the essence of Allah is distinct from his attributes, then you are destroying the unicity of Allah, because if Allah has a plurality of attributes, then he cannot be truly one. Now, why did they argue this way? Because they were being influenced by greek philosophy greek logic greek rationalism right because don't forget folks the writings of the greek philosophers logicians as well as the medical experts right hippocrates Galen, aristotle had been preserved by the syriac speaking christians 
who would translate the writings of the Greeks into Syriac. So when the Muslims took over the Middle East, they found the Syriac-speaking Christians, many of whom were my Assyrian ancestors, studying Greek philosophy, logic, and medicine because they had translated the work of the Greek, the works of the Greeks into Syriac. And the Muslims found those works and translated them to Arabic. And because of that, Greek logic exploded all over the then Muslim world. You with me there? Am I clear? And again, pray for me that by the Holy Spirit, I recall facts correctly and I made no mistakes and I make no mistakes because I'm trusting the Spirit to save me from that. Please, Lord, for your glory. Everyone with me there? So because of that, they explained a lot of statements in the Quran and in the narration of Muhammad allegorically or they explained them away. So here what you're being told is that Muslims were troubled. Muslims had a hard time with the black stone being said to be the right hand of Allah. How? How can this stone, which is part of creation, literally be the right hand of Allah? So guess what they did? They allegorized it. They explained it away as not literal, but allegorical, metaphorical. But now notice who's claiming that this narration, that the black stone is Allah's right hand, is allegorical, metaphorical. Not Muhammad, not Ibn Abbas. Later Muslim scholars, under the influence of Greek philosophy, logic, rationalism, or due to their debates with Christians and Jews, who are now having to go back to the Quran and their narrations and offer new novel explanations due to embarrassment. And I'll give you a modern example. Let me give you a modern example. Didn't that lying slob, stone-licking pagan, Uthman ibn Fibin, do that with Anthony? When Anthony asked about the Quran, did he not then allegorize what <clears throat> is the belief of Salaf Islam? That the Quran will appear on the day of judgment and will actually speak with Allah and defend you. And as a Salafi, he believed that. And we even have a clip catching him in his wicked lie. Thanks to Prophet Google, he uploaded it. You'll find him saying in the masjid of wrong Muslims, the Quran will speak on the day of resurrection. We believe that. It will speak without the need of lungs or a tongue or eyes. But then when he was confronted by Anthony, he did ta'wil. He allegorized it out of embarrassment because he's a son of the devil like his prophet Muhammad. You caught it? Similarly, as the Holy Spirit strengthens my voice, and I'm not a nuisance to my neighbors, please, in Jesus' name. Similarly, these Muslims, when confronted with these statements, confronted with these statements, that the black stone is Allah's right hand, out of embarrassment, they, they interpreted them allegorically, metaphorically. They did ta'wil, ta'wil, allegorize the statements of Muhammad. Now, with that said, let's read his footnote, okay? Footnote 48, narrated from Ibn Abbas, and I hope you can see the print. Notice who's narrating it, Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin. Jabir, Anas, and others by Ibn Abi Omar al-Madani in his Musnad, al-Tabarani, al-Siyuti in his Jami al sahir And it gives you the volume and the page number. Ibn Asakir or Asakir, Asakir in Tariq Damashq and others. Now watch, watch the grading. Ah, Uthman got me. It is considered Da'if weak by Ibn al jawzi Ibn Adi and Al-Bani. While others considered forged a lie, compare following Al Adab or Ahdab, I'm sorry, Al Ahdab, Zawa'id, uh, Tariq, Baghdad. But now watch, guys, watch. However, Al Ajluni in his Kash Al Khafa stated it is Sahi as a halted morsel report from Ibn Abbas, as narrated by Al. Kudai in the wording, the corner of the black stone, al ruqan is Allah's right hand on earth and declared it Hassan 
as a hadith of the prophet. Bah! Did you guys catch it? This chain from Ibn Abbas is Sahih. And as far as a statement of Muhammad is concerned, it's Hassan, good. So notice there are Muslims who say, as a narration from Ibn Abbas, it's sound. And as one coming from Muhammad is Hassan, good. So don't let Ibn Fibbin deceive you and say, or any other Muslim, no, it's Daif, brother, it's forged, according to some. But according to others, it's sound as a narration from Ibn Abbas and considered good, Hassan, as coming from Muhammad. It's going to get worse. Are you with me or did I put you to sleep? I don't know what this, who this guy is. Let me see who this guy is. Who are you? Hello? Let me see. Maybe we got a customer. If not, everyone got it or did I put you to sleep? I don't know who this is. Well, yep, Daif means it passes. He says he's watching my stream, so I don't know what it is. Yeah, who is this? Who is this? This year before I hang up on you, who is this? One more time, who is this? Yeah, sure, you're a fan. You're that little stalker, aren't you? No, you're that stalker, huh? Because you sound like that little turd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure I'm being serious with me? Yeah. Now, can you tell me the name of the Shia that did Muta? What's his name? So you mean your neighbor did Muta with your mama? Okay, all right. All right, yeah. A little punk. Anyway. Sorry about that, guys. Fan. I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan. Could you hear that conversation? You heard him say I'm a fan? Oh, you can hear him, right? It's that little punk. Yep. Okay, now that said, now let's read the other citation, brother, if you can scroll down. As for the saying reported from the prophet, if you're there. Did we lose uh, this guy again? Oh, man, you're scaring me, bro. Okay, right there. Now let's see where we're quoting from. Go down. Keep going so we see where we're getting this from. It's from the same book, Jib Jibril Fuad Haddad, page 83. Same book, Lord willing, it's available as a PDF online. I'll try to link to it. Now let's read it, okay? Now watch here again. Watch again. He's basically going to repeat the same thing I read, but we're creatures are petition, so he likes to repeat himself as well. Let's read it, guys. Pay attention because you're going to see the implication in a minute. Learn how to destroy Islam by their sources. Because here, if the black stone is Allah's right hand, that means Allah can material, materialize, Allah can manifest and materialize in creation as a physical object. You understand where I'm going with this? Why do you think I'm torturing you by having to shout, even though I don't want to shout? Why do you think I'm torturing you Okay, by reading through these lengthy citations with names that make my stuttering and stammering and my lisp scream and beg for mercy. The reason why is because if it's true, the black stone is Allah's right hand, that means Muhammad believed his God could materialize in creation in material form. Allah could actually take on a material shape because the black stone, black stone is a physical object. And if it's Allah's right hand, that means Allah can appear as a physical object and show a part of him physically, materially in creation. You get it? Come on, Christians, wake up. Now let's read it. As for the saying reported from the prophet, the black stone is Allah's right hand. If established as true, now notice the problems they're having. al bayhaqi al bayhaqi Look at the problem he's having. Then it is interpreted figuratively according to the doctrinal necessity. Now notice why they're allegorizing it. Notice what the Muslim is saying. If it's a true statement, you must interpret it figuratively. Why? 
because of doctrinal necessity that Allah is neither spatially confined anywhere nor divisible and the fact that the senses witness that the black stone is not really the right of Allah. Talk about circular reasoning. Talk about begging the question. So al bayhaqi why do you reject the black stone as literally Allah's right hand? Because it is not possible that Allah could be spatially confined or divided. And common sense tells us the black stone is not really the right hand of Allah. Well, my response would be, who told you that Muhammad had any common sense? Who told you that Muhammad didn't think that his God could be spatially confined or divided? Who told you that, al bayhaqi That's not Muhammad, that's you. And you're not inspired. Who cares what you got to say? You see how the Muslims being embarrassed by the statements of the prophet have to correct their prophet, improve on their prophet speech, tell us what their prophet really meant, even though their prophet could have just came out and said it the way they're saying it. <whistles> what do you mean? Well, let's continue. Hopefully, Lord, I hope I'm not screaming. Let me, yeah, I am sheikh. I don't want my neighbors to say, man, this guy's too loud. Okay, therefore, the hadith is taken variously to mean prosperity. According to who? Not Muhammad. Blessing, acceptance, and the context of the Muslims. Pledge of loyalty to their creator. Yet Ibn Raja relates that Ibn al Fawz al Hanbali would say the black stone is Allah's right hand in reality. Haqiqatan. Thank you. Al Hanbali, Ibn al Fawz al Hanbali said, no, the black stone is really Allah's right hand. Haqiqatan. It really is. Don't do ta'wil, don't allegorize it. For which he was nicknamed the Stony, Al Hajari. <laughs> They're making fun of him. Hey, Stony. Hi, Stony. You really think that's the right hand of Allah in reality? We're just going to say you're stone, Stony, because you're Stony, because you're stone by licking the black stone like Allah and his messenger used to. Now, you notice what this Muslim is saying. Ibn al Fas al Hanbali is taking Muhammad at his word. The very fact that he could tell you the black stone is Allah's right hand in reality, haqiqatan, tells you there is no report from Muhammad where Muhammad allegorized the statement. If there was a statement from Muhammad saying it is the right hand of Allah metaphorically, do you think this Muslim would have insisted? No. The black stone is in actuality Allah's right hand, and we do not allegorize it. Is it sinking in, guys? Before I move on, is it making sense? Because we're going to finish it. I hope it's making sense. I hope you're benefiting from this. We got a good crowd. Pray for more numbers for the glory of Christ. Ibn Furak writes that he embarked on a study of Kalam because of this hadith. He went learn Greek logic, rationalism, in order to try to rationalize the statement. That's how perplexed he was. Ibn Qutayba said that it was actually a saying of Ibn Abbas. And he relates a saying of Aisha that the black stone is the depository of the covenant of human souls with Allah on the day of promise. Alastu bi rabbikum. Ibn Hajr cites al khatabis and al muh Is that Muhibi? Muhib, I'm sorry. al Muhib. My and I need glasses. Al Tabri's interpretation of the black stone as representing the place where one declares one's pledge of fidelity to the sovereign. Now, let us read the note again. Footnote narrated from Ibn Abbas, you went too far, Jabir Anas, and others by Ibn Abi Omar al Madani in his Musnad, Al Tabarani al Sayuti in his Jami al Sahir, Ibn Asakir or Asakir in Tarikh Damashk and others. It is considered Da'if. Weak by Ibn al Jawzi, Ibn Addi and Al Bani, while others considered forged. Compare following Al Ahdab, Zawa'id, Tarikh, Baghdad. However, this is the part, even Da'if means it passes. But when you add these other Muslims who disagree, who didn't believe it was Da'if or forged, but stated, however, Al Ajluni stated that it is 
Sahi. Sound. As a halt report, meaning Mursal, that only goes up to Ibn Abbas. As narrated by Al Quday in the wording, the corny of the black stone, Al Ruqan, is Allah's right hand on earth. And he declared it Hassan as a hadith of the Prophet. So, as a narration from Muhammad, it's good. You can say that the chain showing it's from Muhammad, it's a good chain. But you can definitely say, as a narration from Ibn Abbas, sound. Without dispute, it comes from Ibn Abbas. There you go, guys. There you go. So notice what this means, folks. If these traditions are true, Muhammad believed, and his companions like Ibn Abbas believed, Allah could materialize in creation in physical shape. Because the black stone is a material, physical object. If it's Allah's right hand, that means Allah's right hand has entered creation in a physical, material shape. Allah's right hand now appears as a black stone. That black stone is Allah's right hand that is now materialized as a physical object. But it's going to get worse for our friends. Brothers, scroll down till we get to the footnote. Because I'm going to show you something even better. You see that where it says one? Go down all the way to the end note. It's not a footnote. It's an end note. Go all the way down to the end note. You guys ready to get blown away? What are your merc? Merc and beauties. Okay. Can I see the end notes? End notes. Guys, you see the end notes? All on that article. Let me see on YouTube how big it is. Oh, yeah, it's big on YouTube. Okay. Notice the end notes. Oops, hold on. Let me, uh, my computer's about to die. Okay. One second, guys. My computer's about to die. All right. Okay. Now, oops, I did it again. I'm not that innocent. All right. All right. Now, read with me the end notes. Sorry, man. I hope the computer's working. Is it working? Oops. Yeah, it's working. No, I know it's working, man. I'm talking about my charger, dude. You little sinner. Hold on, let me see something. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. I'm a little scared. I'm thinking it's going to die on me. I'm not that innocent. Hold on. I did it again. All right. It should be working, right? Yeah, okay. Now, yeah, it should be working, right? Yeah, okay, it's working. Good. All right. Now, let's read. Why am I singing that stupid song? Not only do I not like her music, I'm not too fond of her. What is it, Britney Spears? And I'm singing her song. Oops, I did it again. I'm not that innocent. All right, let's read the end note. Notice what Muhammad believed he saw. Now, brother, scroll down and click on the link itself. I think I have a link to it. You see where it says uh, Adam.org, Hadith, Termidith, 237? Watch here, guys. You got to yeah. watch here, guys. Get ready to be shocked. And they say that Jesus can't be God in the flesh because God will not become man. Now watch here. This is a narration from Tirmidhi. Don't worry about it being Mursal form because I'm going to show you it's classified Hassan and Sahih. Okay, this is number 237. This is in my article. Narrated Abdurrahman ibn Aish. Aish, Allah's messenger said, I saw my Lord, the exalted and glorious, in the most beautiful form. Say what? Now watch here. I saw my Lord in the most beautiful form, shape. He, meaning Muhammad's Lord said, what do the angels in the presence of Allah contend about? I said, thou art the most aware of it. He then placed his palm between my shoulders, and I felt its coldness in my chest, and I came to know what was in the heavens and the earth. So Allah appeared in a visible shape with a visible hand that physically touched Muhammad. Muhammad felt the hand physically touch him, and he felt the hand being very cool, and then Muhammad became omniscient. Allah made Muhammad omniscient. Allah made Muhammad a partner in his divine omniscience. Allah not only appears as a man in visible shape, 
with a physical hand that can actually be felt and touched. But he made Muhammad omniscient. Because notice what he says. I came to know what was in the heavens and the earth. He recited, thus did we show Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And it was so that he might have certainty. Darimi reported in morsel form and Termidi also reported it. Now go back to my page. I'm going to read some more hadiths. You caught it? Say what? Now the next one. If you can scroll down. It's Jami Tirmidhi. Click on the link itself. Jami Tirmidhi. Now notice this hadith is Hassan. Watch here, guys. Click on the link. You went too far, dude. You want me to come and lay hands on you, man? Don't you see it? Sunnah.com. Where are you, man, so I can find you and lay hands on you? Bless you. Can I do that? All right. This is Jami Tirmidhi. Book 47 chapters on tafsir. So if you scroll down. Oh, my neck feels good. Can I, uh, if you can enlarge it for us right there. Narrated Muad bin Jabal, but for them so they can see it. We got some great mods, right? They do this free of charge. Can you believe it? He not only does it free of charge, but he takes my abuse. Because great is his reward in the kingdom. Anyway, narrated Muad bin Jabal. One morning, the Messenger of Allah was prevented from coming to us for Salah, Salah, Salat, as soup until we were about just about to look for the eye of the sun, meaning sunrise. Then he came out quickly, had the Salah prepared for. The Messenger of Allah performed the Salah, and he performed his Salah in a relatively quick manner. When he said the Salam, he called aloud with his voice, saying to us, Stay in your woes as you are. Then he, then he turned, coming near to us. Then he said, I'm going to narrate to you what kept me from you this morning. I got up during the night. I performed wudu, wudu and prayed as much as I was able to. And I dozed off during my salah and fell deep asleep. You want me to wait for the rapture for you to scroll down? Then I saw my Lord. Then I saw my Lord, blessed and most high, in the best of appearances. He said, Oh, Muhammad. I said, My Lord, here I am, my Lord. He said, What is it that the most exalted group busy themselves with? I said, I do not know, Lord. And he said it three times. He said, So I saw him place his palm between my shoulders, and I sense the coolness of his fingertips between my breast. Then everything was disclosed for me, and I became aware. So he said, oh, Muhammad. I said, here I am, my Lord. He said, what is it that the most exalted group busy themselves with? I said, in the acts that atone. He said, and what are they? I said, the footsteps to the congregation, the gatherings in the masjid after the salah. Isbah al wudu during difficulties. He said, then what else? I said, feeding others, being lenient in speech, and salah during the night while the people are sleeping. He said, ask. I said, Allah, I ask of you the, the doing of the good deeds, avoiding the evil deeds, loving the poor, and that you forgive me and have mercy upon me. And when you have willed fitna in the people, then take me without the fitna. And I ask you for your love, the love of whoever you love. And the love of the deeds that bring one nearer to your love. The Messenger of Allah said, indeed, it is true. So study it and learn it. Now go back to see the classification. Go down. And that, No, no, don't go back. Stay there and go down. Yeah. What's the classification? Watch here. Great Hassan. Good. Great Hassan. Good. English translation, volume 5. Book 44, Hadith 3235. Now go back to the page so we can look at the other two. Okay. Now this is going to come from Mishkat al-Masabi. Okay, go all the way. Yeah, click on that one. Yep, click on that one. Mishkat al-Masabi. Mishkat al-Masabi. Book 4 on prayer. Now watch here. Abdul Rahman bin Aish reported, God's messenger as saying, I saw my Lord in the most beautiful form. And he said, what do the angels near my presence dispute about? I replied, thou knowest best. Then he placed the palm of his hand between my shoulder blades. 
and I felt the coolness of it between my nipples. Ew! You happy to see me, stranger? <laughs> my nipples, they feel very nice. Man, your, your fingertips kind of got my nipples kind of hard, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, then I knew what was in the heavens and the earth. And he recited, thus did we show Abraham the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And it was so that he might have certainty. Al-Quran 675. Now, what is the grade? Scroll down. Go up a little more. More. Right there. Dadami transmitted it in morsel form. Morsel, meaning that it's broken. There's a missing link. Now go back. We're going to read the final one. The final one. Mishkat al-Masabi. The final one, Mishkat al-Masabi. I hope this is not boring, you guys. Let me know if it is. I hope it's not. Because this is going to put weapons in your hand to glorify Jesus Christ and destroy Islam for the glory of Christ. Okay? Do you want to just stay on that page, brother? You don't want to go to Sunna? What's going Brother, is Biden bothering you, dude? No, you're going up. Where, where do you want to go, man? Listen, bro. Yeah. You better down. you better check check yourself before you wreck yourself. You just passed the link, bro. You see oh, that link right there, bro? That link, that one. Yeah, that you one see that? One? Hey, man, tell Biden get out of your basement, sucker. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Suck an MC, call me sire. All right, this again, Mishkat al Masabi, Muad bin Jabal said, God's messenger was detained one morning from observing the prayer with us till the sun had almost appeared over the horizon. He then came, it was supposed to be out, right? Is that what it says? Or is that a typo? Cut, right? Does it say cut? Yeah, or yeah, it, says, it says cut. <laughs> yeah, see, so that means, okay, even though I need glasses, I'm not that bad. Yeah, that's a typo. He then came out quickly, and when the iqama had been uttered, he conducted the prayer in a shortened form. Then when he had given the salutation, he called out to us saying, keep to your rows as you were. Then turning to us, he said, I shall tell you what detained me from you this morning. I got up during the night, performed ablution, and prayed what I could. But during my prayer, I dozed and was overcome. And there, and then, I saw my Lord in the most beautiful form. He addressed me by name. And when I replied, at thy service, Labayk, my Lord, Rabbi. He asked, what do the angels near my presence dispute about? And I replied, that I did not know. He asked it three times. Then I saw him put the palm of his hand between my shoulder blades so that I experienced the coolness of his fingers between my nipples. Ew! Oh, man, don't touch my nipples. I'm sensitive. Oh, you brood. You bait. Ooh, don't touch my nipples. I'm sensitive. You glad to see me? Dig if you will. All right, anyway. All right. All right, my nipples. So everything became clear to me. And I attained knowledge. He then addressed me by name. And when I replied, at thy service, my Lord, Labayk, Rabbi. He asked, what do the angels near my presence dispute about? He replied, I replied, expiation. He asked what they were. And I replied, walking on foot to the congregational prayers, sitting in the mosques after the prayers are over and performing complete ablution in difficult circumstances. He asked, what next they disputed about? And when I said it was about degrees, he asked what they were, and I replied, providing food, speaking gently, and praying at night when people are asleep. He then told me to make a request, and I said, oh God, I ask thee for power to do good things and abandon objectionable things for love towards the poor, that thou shouldest forgive me and show mercy to me, and that when thou intendest to test any people, thou will take me to thyself without being led astray. <clears throat> And I ask for thy love, the love of those who love thee, and a love of doing things which will bring near me near to thy love. Then God's messenger said, it is true. So study it and learn it. Now watch the grading. Watch the grading. Ahmad. There's Biden again. He went down for no reason. I'm reading it and he went down. Sahih, Albani verdict. Go up again. Ahmad and Termidi transmitted it, and Termidi said, this is a Hassan Sahih tradition. 
I asked Muhammad bin Ismail Al Bukhari. Notice Bukhari about this tradition. Bukhari said it is a Sahih tradition. Say what? Even Bukhari said this is Sahih. Wow, guys. A Sahih tradition that passes Bukhari's strict test of authenticity. Rated Hassan Sahih. Good sound. Tirmidhi. Where Muhammad says, my Lord appeared as a man in a beautiful shape and form as a man. How do I know as a man? Because he had a hand and his hand touched me. The palm of his hand touched my chest and his fingers just touched my chest. And I felt how cool his hand was. <whistles> wow. So guys, let me understand the logic. Allah's right hand can become a black stone, can materialize in creation as a physical stone object. So that if you touch it, you touch Allah. If you kiss it, you kiss Allah's right hand. Allah can also appear in a beautiful shape as a man. And you can actually feel his physical touch, the touch of his hand physically. And yet, God cannot become Jesus Christ Jesus Christ cannot be God in the flesh. Yep, I'm ready to take shahada. But now let's end it with this final section. Go back to my paper, brother. To the article. I'll tell you where to go up, go up. I'll tell you slowly. There's a lot of end notes that I post. You'll see they're all numbered. You're going to go above it. Keep on. Keep on, go. Okay, right there, right? No, 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 sorry. My, my mistake. Go ahead. We're still in the Hadith section. This is the end notes. I forgot. Keep going. Keep going. My apologies. Poor brother. If he can actually endure this, you know this man is ready for war. Keep going. Yep, yep, yep. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'll tell you where. All right. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, a little more. You see that link right there? The link where it says Mahmoud Ibn Ahmad al Dosri. Can you click on that? Okay. Now, brother, we're going to show you something. This is a book that you can download as a PDF file. It's written by a Muslim. The citations that I quote are from that book. Can you enlarge it so they can see it? Watch here, guys. Watch here. In my article, I link to this book. Is that as big as it gets? Let's see. In my article, I link to this book. I want you to see it, okay? Virtues of the Kaaba. Virtues of the Kaaba. You can download that book as a PDF file. It has a section on the virtues of the black stone, narrating authentic narrations attributed to Muhammad. And some of those narrations you'll find in my other post, which I link to in this one at the bottom. So you got all this information for free. Thank the Lord Jesus for this technology, which is free. You only pay for the internet. God is equipping you by the Spirit to know the Bible is the perfect Word of God. The God of the Bible, Israel, Christ is alive. And <clears throat> the Lord is giving you resources to destroy these lies and blasphemies, to destroy Islam, atheism, agnosticism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, all the cults, you name it. We live in a time where God has now left mankind with absolutely no excuse to know that he's God and Jesus is Lord and the Bible is his word. No excuse. Thank the Lord. We have eyes to see and ears to hear and we belong to the spirit of the living God, the Father and the Son. Now, we're not going to download the PDF file. I just want you to show, show you where I'm getting it from. We're now going to read from my article where I quote from this book written by a muslim now what's his name let's go back to see his name it's right there muhammad ibn ahmed no no go back to my article you're gonna make me hang myself with my shoestrings okay muhammad ibn ahmed al dosari dosari muhammad ibn ahmed al dosari virtues of the kaaba pages 39 of 40 and pages 43 of 47 all i'm gonna do is now read so let's go back to the top of the quotation. Watch, guys, and then I'll be done with this section. Watch. Keep going to the top till you get to where it starts. Keep going. 
We got more? Follow with me, guys. I may have to just end it here and then do another session on Enoch, son of man. Keep going, brother. Let's see. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, okay go, go back down. Go back down. Slowly, slowly. Keep going down. More, more. Down, down, down. You're going to pass the citations? All right. Those are biblical citations. Okay, now keep going down. Right there, part three. Here's where I begin quoting him. Here's where I begin quoting him. Guys, pay attention. Learn these arguments for the glory of Jesus Christ. Islam has to be destroyed because it is the most obviously satanic, irrational, incoherent, unintelligible, <clears throat> sexually <clears throat> immoral religion out there. I'm trying to just give you description after description. I don't know what else to say. But it is the most obviously perverted, sexually immoral, wicked, <clears throat> idolatrous, incoherent garbage known to mankind. Now, someone may disagree and say, well, no, Hinduism is just as bad, if not worse. Well, I don't know. I don't know much about Hinduism. But now let's read. And may the Holy Spirit strengthen my throne and voice and make it pleasing to you as you learn to glorify Jesus. Here it is. Part three, glorify Jesus by destroying Islam. All right, don't hate. Part three, the black stone is the right hand of Allah on earth. Among the virtues of the black stone is that it is the right hand of Allah most high on earth. As Ibn Abbas said, this corner is the right hand of Allah on earth with which he greets his servants. A greeting of a man for his bro brother. What? The black stone is Allah greeting you? Did you guys catch it? Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin, considered one of the greatest Muslim scholars of all time, saying, hey, when you go to the black stone, that's Allah's right hand greeting you, saying hi to you. So greet it. How do you greet Allah? By kissing the black stone, touching it. Because the black stone is Allah greeting you. <laughs> Words of scholars regarding the meaning of this hadith. Now notice again, he has to quote scholars, not Muhammad or his companions. He's not getting Muhammad or his companions explaining it. He has to quote later scholars who have to allegorize it. But with that said, al khatabi said, the meaning of this is that whoever greeted the stone on earth yes, has done a pact with Allah like the pact of the kings used with whom wanted special attribution or alliance by greetings or by clapping hands for swearing allegiance or the like, the kissing of the hand of a servant to his master or with elders by analogy. See, when you kiss the black stone or touch it, you're greeting Allah, touching Allah, making a pact with Allah, like you do when you shake a king's hand or kiss his hand. Two, Al-Muhib Al-Tabari said, and these were the authors that Jibril Haddad, Fuad Haddad cited as well. All the kings used to give their right hand to any newcomer for them to kiss. It is the same for a pilgrim. When he enters the sanctuary, it is a tradition for him that the first thing he has to do is kiss the right hand of his king. Notice, who's the king? Allah. When Muslims enter the sanctuary, the Kaaba, what do they do? Kiss the right hand of their king. What king? Allah. Well, how do you kiss his right hand? Kiss the black stone, which descended especially for that. And for Allah is the highest attribute. Did you catch it? Allah sent down the black stone as his right hand for you to kiss and greet when you enter the Kaaba. Part four, touching the black stone expiates sins. Notice, not only does the black stone greet you as Allah's right hand in material, physical form, so that when you touch it and kiss it, you're touching and kissing Allah's right hand. The black stone atones for your sins the black stone removes your sins the black stone appeases allah to forgive you of your sins touching and stroking i don't know why i keep bringing up those images brother touching and stroking the black stone expiates sins only minor ones oh gee thank you at least it's minor Concerning, concerning the major ones, 
True repentance is necessary as the following hadiths explain. Abdullah ibn Ubaid ibn Umair narrated, he heard his father telling him, <clears throat> Ibn Umar, his father telling Ibn Umar, why is it I see you touching only these two corners, the black stone and the Yemeni, Yemeni corner, the Yemeni corner, corner facing, well, may not be Yemen. It may be just from Yemen. Anyway, either way, Blackstone and the Yemeni corner, may the Holy Spirit save me from error for the glory of Jesus. Ibn Omar answered, I do so because I heard Allah's messenger saying, touch both of them, touching both of them removes sins. Wait, wait, wait. What did Muhammad say? Muhammad said, touching both of them removes sins. Two, in another version, passing one's hand over them removes mistakes. Three, Ibn Ubaid, Ibn Umair, narrated from his father. Ibn Omar used to compete with others to touch both corners, i.e. the corner of the black stone and the Yemeni corner. In a way, the like of which I've never seen any of the companions of the prophets do. I said to him, <clears throat> O Abu Abdurrahman, father of Abdurrahman, you compete with others to touch both corners in a way the like of which I've never seen any one of the companions of the prophet do. He said, yes, I do. I heard Allah's messenger say, passing the hand over them expiates sins, atones for sins, removes sins. Four, Ibn Omar narrated, the prophet said, Passing one's hand over the Yemeni corner and the black corner truly removes sins. <whistles> oh, it gets worse, guys. Part four. It gets worse, guys. Part five. Oh, I'm sorry. Gee, correct me, dude. You know I'm born yesterday, right? I'm not as smart as Prophet Google. <laughs> Actually, it's part V. How about that? Me, me, me. Yeah, it's part five. He's right. I don't know why they're going with Roman numerals. These are Roman numerals, but it looks like a V to me. Anyway, part five. Testimony of the black stone in favor of those who touch it righteously. Watch, guys. Among the virtues of the black stone is that Allah Most High will raise it up on the day of resurrection. It will have two eyes which with with which it will see, and a tongue with which it will talk, and it will give witness in favor of everyone who touched it righteously in this world. Among the hadiths concerning, concerned by this matter, now it's going to narrate the hadith. One, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said, this stone has a tongue and two lips, and it will bear witness on the day of resurrection to those who touch it righteously. And I give you the end notes, what hadiths the author is quoting from. And they're sound. They're not daif, brother. They're not forged, brother. Two, Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said, this black stone would come on the day of resurrection, having two eyes to see therewith and a tongue to speak therewith, to bear witness to those who touched it righteously. Three, again, Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's first cousin. Ibn Abbas narrated, Allah's messenger said about the stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection, having two eyes to see therewith, and a tongue to speak therewith, to bear witness to those who touched it righteously. Four, Abdullah ibn Amru ibn al-As, the ass. Abdullah ibn Amru ibn the ass, the son of the brain ass. That's not what it means, by the way. Ibn al-As, al-As doesn't mean ass, but I'm just having fun. Narrated, Allah's messenger said, the black stone will come on the day of judgment, larger than Abu Qubais, having a tongue and two lips. Now let's read the conclusion of the author, the Muslim author. The hadiths are clear. Such hadiths are to be taken as they are. You hear it, Muslims? Even though he cites Ibn Taymiyyah, 
who when it comes to Allah's hands and shin and waist and eyes, condemn people who would allegorize them, but then inconsistently as a hypocrite, Ibn Taymiyyah says, well, the black stone is not literally Allah's right hand. So he allegorized that, but when it comes to Allah's eyes, hands, shin and waist, no, those are literal, even though it's unlike anything in creation. Because Ibn Taymiyyah is an inconsistent hypocrite like his prophet, who's like his father, the devil. But anyway, the Lord Jesus be glorified and increase in us. Such hadiths are to be taken as they are. Allah Almighty is certainly able to give sight and the ability to speak to inanimate objects. The bodies are alike. The phenomena accepted by some can actually be accepted by others. Indeed, Allah is able to do all things except become Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So notice, Allah can do all things. Allah can appear as a man. Allah can materialize his right hand as a physical stone, which is his right hand on earth in material physical form. But Allah cannot be the man Jesus. And the man Jesus cannot take away your sins, but a black stone can take away your sins and intercede for you and save you on the last day. The people who have in their heart the sickness of philosophy, that's kalam. Here, philosophy means kalam. May Allah protect us. Say, this is a symbol. So notice, those who were influenced by Greek rational thinking, rationalization, rationalism, rationality, logic, those Muslims said, ah, this is metaphorical. It's a symbol. May Allah protect us from them. This is what the Muslim is saying. This is a symbol of the reward of the person who touched the stone and that his effort is not wasted. El Baidawi surprisingly said, El Baidawi, Baidawi surprisingly said, the most probably, probable meaning is this one, even if we can't accept the apparent meaning. So Baidawi was embarrassed. He goes, most likely it's this, even though we can still accept that the stone will have actual eyes, actual lips, actual tongue to speak and see. This is not surprising for someone prone to philosophizing. See, someone who's poisoned by Greek philosophy, not surprising he would say that. This is not surprising for someone prone to philosophizing about interpreting the Quran and explaining the Hadith. May Allah forgive him. You see what he's saying? We true Muslims do not let Greek philosophy poison us to make us allegorize or explain away what's literal. Allah forgive that Muslim and protect us from that. Ah. Oh. But then they use philosophy and logic to deny that God can become a man, become flesh, that God can take on the nature of a man, possess two natures without ceasing to be God, without deifying his humanity, and thereby reject Jesus as God in the flesh. You see these inconsistent hypocrites? Inconsistent hypocrites. So that said, you know what I'll do? Because I'm going to have to head out, maybe to a Bible study. Sargundi, I'm going to go to that Assyrian Bible study if you want to go. Yeah. Anyway, I got 15 more minutes, which I can take for Q&A. If you have questions, I'll take it. I'm going to have to retitle this. Lord Jesus willing, tomorrow, if the Lord wills, I'll do a session on Enoch, son of man. I wanted to do it today. But for now, I should be done with Islam for a while. Hopefully, you got enough material on my channel, on my blogs, as well as elsewhere, David Wood, Anthony Rogers, El Fadi, to destroy the lie that Islam is monotheistic, to destroy the blasphemy of Islam, to show that Islam is a wicked, evil, sexually immoral, <clears throat> irrational, incoherent, unintelligible book of porn and filth and misguidance. May the Lord Jesus erase the Quran, save Muslims, erase Muhammad's memory, and bring those who've been taken victim and captive by the satanic deceit to his glorious feet and save them as only he can, the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Now, Lord willing, I'm going to go back to discuss core biblical doctrines, Trinity, deity of christ his humanity the holy spirit salvation and finish the sessions that we started 
and start a new series on Messianic prophecy, if the Lord wills. Thank you. We had a good crowd today. We had about 380. Pray the numbers increase and stay strong for the glory of Jesus Christ. With that said, I'm not going to start a new topic because we're already, already two, about two hours into this one, one hour, 45 minutes. But I will open up to Q&A on any subject. You can Skype me or join me on StreamYard. Here's a link to StreamYard. If not, I'll end it. All right, there's the stream. If you want to join me on StreamYard, stream yard, come on. Take the articles that I have in the description box. Upload them to your channels. Translate them. Understand the arguments correctly. Please do not misunderstand, mishear, misread what you see, what you hear, what you read. Because if you misunderstand anything and then you go share that misunderstanding, you are now misleading people, albeit unintentionally. Make sure you've understood the points, grasp them correctly by the power of the Holy Spirit, and share them accurately. May the Lord Jesus save us from errors, misinformation, empower us to understand these facts perfectly, and proclaim them for His glory and the power of the Holy Spirit without compromise, without shame, even unto death, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Any questions? Call me on Skype or contact me on StreamYard. If not, I'm going to wrap it up. Again, pray for my mods. Thank all my mods, Protestant believer, for bearing with me, helping me to post these citations so you can see them visually, as well as these other mods who are here maintaining order in the comments section, as well as Prophet Google who's uploading these videos making clips and cartoons out of his love for Jesus as a service to you, and none of them get paid, right? Protestant has to work a full-time job and as a family. Prophet Google has to pay his bills as he's doing this. It's me who's doing this full-time. And until and unless God calls them to full-time ministry, they have to work to pay their bills, and therefore, they're sacrificing from their own busy schedule to serve me free of charge because their reward is with Jesus. Their reward is Jesus, and Jesus is my reward. May they be blessed. May they be filled with the Spirit. May the Lord Jesus flood them in his love and preserve them because of their love for Jesus and his church. Lord bless you, brothers. Anyway, let's see if anyone's calling me. Uh-oh. I think it's that stalker again. He says he says he has a question. Let's see. Before I put you on the air, yes. Yes. What are you, sir? No, what are you? What's your background? Okay, let me call you then on Skype because now you passed the test. I thought you were one of these stalkers. Hold on. Let me call you on Skype. Okay, let me call you right Hold on. All right, let me call this guy uh, because it turned out to be legit. Too legit to quit. Too legit to quit. Pray for me that the Lord Jesus will give me perfect self-control, self-discipline to keep getting healthier, that my voice is perfectly healthy and my sound strong by the Holy Spirit and to get holier and to truly love the Lord and obey the Lord. And for my daughters in Jesus' name. Without my health, I can't do this. And without holiness, I cannot please Jesus Christ. Pray I'm a doer of his word. And pray for the provision for the ministry. The Lord doesn't need my ministry, doesn't need me. We need him. Okay, now, hold on. Yes, yes sir. sir. Go ahead, friend. What's your question? Yes, sir. Um... First, I want to just say thank you very much for the sermon. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Let me just very, turn off the, very, the let me turn off. Hold on, yeah. don't hate man. Let me just sure. turn off. Let me just turn off the air condition. Sure. You're a hater. You're jealous I got muscles from Brussels. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. What's your question? Go ahead, brother. Yes, please. Um, please, I have a question because um I I was um, doing the studies, and I had a, I had I had this friend who I was having. You uh, have friends? Debate. Yeah, I had a friend. Actually, he's a classmate. Um, he's not a Christian, 
but uh, when I was having a debate, he was asking me about the deity of Jesus Christ. And okay. I told him that Jesus Christ, we, we as Christians, we do worship Jesus Christ because he is God in the flesh. What he is the son of God. And uh, he asked me to prove the Trinity to him because he does not believe in the Trinity. So I mentioned the fact that in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, that Jesus himself affirmed the Trinity, okay. that um, he told the disciples that they should go to, I mean, they should make disciples of all nations, yes. baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I even went ahead and gave him First John 5, 7. Uh-huh. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The, the Father, Father, the Word, the, the Holy Word, Ghost, and the these Holy three Spirit. are one. And then all of a sudden he was telling me that, oh, that is not true. You know, the King James Bible is a heretical book. And that that is called the what, what was it again? He said something. He said, yeah, he said it was called the coma Johanium. Oh, yes, I, I know that. I'm aware of it. Yes. Yeah. So I, I was a bit um, taken aback. So what I did was I, I gave him further scriptures like Matthew chapter three, when Jesus was getting baptized yeah. by the Baptist that um, as he was being baptized, the, heaven, the heavens opened up, God sent down the Holy Spirit and so what happened said all these that, verses uh, you gave what happened then what's the conclusion yes please the conclusion is that um uh sorry hello yes hello yeah yeah so i thought i lost you there no. yes so the, the conclusion is that i i i'm, I'm not sure what the who you hey nine comma is because i've i've done some youtube yeah. I, I mean i did some research on youtube and i realized that there's a lot of debate yes about the okay, now, brother, of brother. Yes, please. I just wanted more yeah. information. Listen, more brother. advice. Yeah. Are you listening? Because you got to listen if you want an answer. Sure, sir. Okay, yeah. here's the thing. Forget about 1 John 5, 7. What did he say about those other passages? Well, he what he was telling me was that um, is, is, is this, it, well, he, that he, was, he was telling me that he doesn't believe in the fact that Jesus is God because we if know, Jesus brother, was God, you're going to make me hit my head against the, the wall. Point of Jesus coming down. Jehmi, Jehmi, yes. I'm going to hit yes, my please. head against the wall. Okay. Yeah. I know he doesn't believe Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. What did he say about the verses you quoted? Well, he, he, he didn't have any rebuttal against it. He okay. just doesn't believe it, especially. And then he All threw right. at me. So why are you wasting John your time? Seven. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time? Uh, well, I, I just noted down the fact that he said that you hate nine comma. Okay, so but I, was... I know, but brother, let's take it step by You're gonna kill me, brother. You're gonna if I die and go to heaven, I'm so, gonna blame you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you're gonna give me a heart attack, and you're gonna kill me. And if I go to heaven, I'm gonna blame you. But no, <laughs> well, that would be something good if I go to heaven in Jesus' name, brother. Yeah. You keep focusing on First John five or seven. When I keep wanting to know, what did he say about those passages that he could not reject? Because he couldn't say that they're not original. Forget First John 5, 7. So his answer was, no matter what you quoted, he didn't accept it? Yes, he did, he did not accept it. He switched the conversation completely. I exactly. focused on the fact that these other scriptures prove the Trinity, but okay. he didn't want to So have it. he's not okay. listening. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you lick him salami. Harris, can you call me so he can make you lick some more salami? Okay, he's not listening to evidence because he doesn't care. So my question to you is, since he doesn't care, why are you wasting your time with him? Mm, that's, that's a good point. Okay, you gave him verses showing yeah. the Trinity. He couldn't yeah. refute them. He rejected them. Okay, so then yeah. that means he's not asking because he wants to learn. He's asking because he wants to prove you're wrong. So before I get okay. to 1 John 5, 7, before we get yeah. there, I want to yeah. know why then are you engaging him when he's not interested in the facts? Uh, well, he, he did ask me the question, so I... And now you answered, right? Yeah. And then when you gave him facts, you saw his motive wasn't because he wanted to learn. He was hoping that he could confuse you and get you to yeah. doubt your faith. Mm. Right? Yeah. So are you still engaging in discussion with him? Uh, no. Okay, no. good. All right, so now let's put that aside. As far as First yeah. John 5, 7 is concerned, it is a disputed passage. Now, my personal conviction, it is genuine. I do believe it's genuine. But m my point to you would be don't 
focus on passages okay. that are in dispute because then you're going to waste time trying to prove why those passages are genuine. And then you lose a golden opportunity of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and presenting who God is clearly from passages that are not in dispute because you went to a passage that's in dispute and now you have to waste all the time to prove why it's genuine. Okay. Right? Okay. There yeah. is extremely good evidence that this passage was there in the early manuscripts because you have a citation of it from a Latin father in the beginning part of the third century where he cites it as something written, which means that if he's citing it, he's getting it from his Latin copy of 1 John, which means that his Latin copy of 1 John must have been translated from a Greek exemplar. So that means the Greek of 1 John, from which this Latin copy was made, would have had it. So now you have evidence to show that it goes back all the way to the second century, and you find it in very early ancient Latin witnesses and Latin copies of the Greek of 1 John. Now, we don't okay. have as much evidence for 1 John 5, 7 in the Greek copies of 1 John, but it doesn't mean it's not genuine. It just means we don't have enough copies of 1 John that are early and widespread that attest to this passage okay. being there or not. The scholars okay. that question the passage is because they prioritize, they prioritize. Now, Kul Muso, I think he wants to get blocked. Kul Muso. Did you read the refutation to Daniel Wallace's pathetic attempt of explaining away <clears throat> Cyprian's reference to 1 John 5, 7? Yeah, I think I got to get rid of Kumuso. Sometimes he chimes in because I think he's trying to impress me with his knowledge. And he doesn't know I don't get impressed. But anyway, for you who's listening. Yeah. Okay. The reason why many of these scholars reject 1 John 5, 7 is because they prioritize Greek copies and only give translations a cursory glance, meaning for them, for them, yeah. if the New Testament is in Greek, then they want Greek copies that are ancient to <clears throat> accept that a reading is genuine. Even though you may have ancient translations like Latin, that attests to the verse being there, that's still not good enough for them. Okay. You see, but my point is, I have my reasons for accepting it's genuine. I believe it's genuine. But I don't debate about it, and I don't waste my time on it, because that passage, even if genuine, is not a proof of the Trinity. You misread it. Oh, okay. Who told you it's a proof of the Trinity? Here, go back to 1 John 5. Open your Bible. Let's go through it. Okay, sure. John. Um, yes, please. I'm right okay, here. First John 5. Let's see what the context is about. Start at okay. 6 and read to 8. Okay, so um, First John 5, starting from verse 6, it says, uh, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. Yeah, because and water meaning water baptism and the blood that he shed, right? Yes. Okay, keep going. Okay. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. Verse 7. Now notice what it's talking about. Yeah. Testimony, testifying, bearing witness, right? Yes, please. So the spirit bears witness, because the spirit is truth and cannot lie, so he testifies. Notice the mm. context is about having two or three witnesses. Why? Because God's law demands you have at least two or three witnesses before you accept something as factual. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. Yeah. So here's one witness, the spirit. But the law says you need multiple witnesses. And that's the law from God. So God who's consistent with himself and consistent with his law will now meet the demands of his own law and provide multiple witnesses. And who are these multiple witnesses? Keep going. Okay. Um, so for verse 7, um, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are okay, one. Okay, now, they're one in what context? What's the context of their unity? Um, I take it that they are one as in one God. 
No, show me that in the verse. You're not reading it. Read it again. Okay. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. One in what sense? You just um, read it. One in the sense of bearing record. Ah, light switch went on. They are united in their witness. And here's proof that it's speaking about them being united in their witness. Now read verse 8. Okay. Um, and there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. You see what the context is? The oneness has nothing to do with essence. It means their unified, united testimony. Just like spirit does not have the same essence as water, and water does not have the same essence as blood, but they agree as one in their confession and testimony of who Jesus is. The Father, the Word, and Holy Spirit are one in their witness and their testimony. But it doesn't tell us that they're one in essence because you can have three beings in heaven, one who's God and the other two creatures bearing witness. It's not proof that they're one God. This passage is not about them being one God. It means the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one in their witness, one okay. in their testimony. They agree in their confession that Jesus is God's son because Jesus okay. bore witness he's God's son. The Father bore witness that, he, that Jesus is a son, and so did the Spirit. So uh -huh. even if genuine, and it is, because I believe it is, it's not about the Trinity. Wow. Because I was under the impression that it was it was about the Trinity. Because you because read it out of context. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I, it looks like I, I completely took it out of context. And it's not your fault. The problem we have with brothers and sisters in Christ, they do not know how to read context. It's not just you. I had that problem. I didn't come out of my mother's womb knowing the Bible, right? <laughs> but verse 7 is verse 7 for a reason. That means there are six verses that came before it and other verses that come after it, right? Yes, please. Right? Aren't there six verses that come before verse 7? Yes, there is. Yeah. And then there is, if you read chapter 5, it ends at 21. So after 7, you have more verses. So what we do is we'll read one verse and never think about, okay, let me read what came before it. Let me read mm. what comes mm. after it so I can understand it more properly. Mm. Right? Yes, please. Yeah. So in the, you don't need to say please, brother. Just say yes. It's okay. Okay. Right? So in, in that particular context, is it talking about Father and Word and Spirit being one in essence or that they are united in their confession of who Jesus is? Because it's about Jesus being confessed as a son of God, if you read verses 9 or 13. Yes. I mean, now, now that the, con the context is clear, it's about the Father and the Word and the Holy Ghost confessing that Jesus is Lord. Why? Not Lord. It doesn't say Lord there. I mean, that Jesus is God, is the Son no, of God. No, yeah, Son of God, yes. Make sure you're faithful to the text. It doesn't say okay. he's Lord. I know he is, but not in that chapter. Nor does it say okay. God. It says Son of God. Okay. So the Father and the Word of the Holy Spirit bear record and agree as one in their witness and confession and testifying that Jesus is what? The Son of God. You got it. Now, I'll give you a passage that does show there are two divine persons who exist as God. But again, because we read one verse out of context, you can't prove it if you don't read the context. If you just read the one verse, you can't prove your case. But go to okay. John 10, 30. This is a passage that all Christians use, but then the anti-Trinitarian will turn it against you because we don't read context. John 10, 30. Okay. John 10, 30. Hmm? It says, I and my father are one. See, every Christian and his mother and grandfather quotes us to prove that Jesus claimed to be God. But okay. they only read verse 30, John 10, 30. I and my father are one. Now, the anti-Trinitarian who doesn't believe Jesus is God is now going to turn against you. He's going to say, okay, I and my Father are one. You're saying one God, one in essence. Well, hold on. Go to re go to John 17, 11. Okay, John 17, 11. Um, John 17, 11 says, and now I am more, uh, sorry, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, 
keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Aha! The disciples yeah. are one with Father and Son. So are they God too? No. Okay, so then why do you assume when Jesus says, I am my Father and one, it means that they're one God? <laughs> you see the problem? Yeah. Okay, so how do I know whether Jesus is saying, I am one with the Father in essence, so the Father and I are one God, or maybe he's saying, I and the Father are one in that we always work in perfect union. We are perfectly united, which is why I only do what he wants me to do. Which meaning supports the context? Is he saying, I'm one with the Father in essence, because both of us are the one God, or I'm one with him in agreement and purpose, in that his will is my will, and we're perfectly united in fulfilling his will. How do I know which meaning fits the context? Well, from, from what is written here, I just have to agree to the fact that Jesus is saying that he's one with the Father in agreement, not in essence. Ah, good. But good you said that because you're wrong. Good Sorry? you said that. You're wrong. He is saying, I and the Father are one in essence and nature. Now, let me prove it to you. You know why? Okay. Because we're going to read context, not just okay. one verse out of context, right? Okay. Now, go to John 10, 27, 28. Okay, John 10, 27 to 28. Okay, John 10, 27 to 28. Um, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Okay, now notice what Jesus said. They're my sheep. They hear my voice. They're in my hand, right? Yes. And because they're in my hand, there's no power that can destroy them, right? Yes. And I guarantee them eternal life. Mm. You see that? Mm, yeah. Okay. What a kind of attributes, qualities must Jesus have to be able to give every single true believer never-ending, immortal, incorruptible life, and guarantee that no power can destroy any true believer? Well, he must have godly attributes. You got it. Only God could do and say what Jesus did, right? Yes. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what Jesus just said, you'll find in the Old Testament that it's said about the true God. Notice Jesus says, they're my sheep. They hear my voice. They're in my hand, right? Yes. My sheep, my voice in my hand. Okay. Now go to Psalm 95 and read 6 to 8. Psalm 95, 6 to 8. My sheep, my voice in my hand. Psalm 95, six to eight. 6 to 8. Yes, verses 6 to 8. Okay. It says, verse 6, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Verse 7, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. You confuse me. It says here, believers are the sheep of Jehovah's hand, in his hand, and they're to hear his voice. But Jesus said, yeah. believers are my sheep in my hand, and they're to hear my voice. Huh. Right? Only God sees that. Say it again. Only God sees that. Hey, but Jesus said it. Yeah, which proves that he is God. I mean, he's literally saying he's God. You got it. And then moreover, it's Jesus also said, I give them everlasting life, and no one can deliver out of my hand, right? Yes. Go to Isaiah 43, 13. Isaiah 43, 13. Isaiah 43, 13. Okay. Isaiah 43, 13. Isaiah 43, verse 13. It says, um, Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Then isn't that what I, Jesus said? No one can deliver them out of my hand? Yes. So why did Jesus say, none can deliver out of my hand? Because he is God. And then also God says, from eternity, from that day, I am he, right? Yes. But in John 8, 24, Jesus tells the Jews, unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Yes. Now go to Deuteronomy 32, 39. 
Deuteronomy 32, 39. Okay, Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. It says, um, See now that I am even, sorry, let me repeat that again. Deuteronomy 32, 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. Hmm. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the true God says, I I make alive and none can deliver out of my hand. Jesus says, I give everlasting life and no one can deliver out of my hand. Hmm. Right? Yes. Now go back to John 10. Let's read 27 okay. to 29. And for those listening, I've already done sessions on this. I've already, already explained John 10 in context. I have many sessions on this and articles on this. This is why I keep telling people, go back through the archive. Go back and watch all the older sessions because I already discussed these very passages on more than one occasion. And I've even linked to articles where I discuss this in depth in my articles and rebuttals. It's there. But don't just keep watching the latest one. See, the problem is Christians will only watch the latest one. No, guys, go back to the archive. Go watch the very first one and binge watch. Instead of binge watching Netflix, binge watch my sessions, Anthony Rogers sessions, Al Fadi sessions, and so on and so forth. Binge watch on Bible. Binge watch on theology. Binge watch on sessions and grow in your love, your understanding, your worship, your purity, your devotion, and your obedience. Now, anyway, John 10, 27 to 30. Okay. Tapia, um, your God is beneath my ass cheeks. Your God is under my foot. My urine is better than your God and your prophet that whore the devil. When you insult Jesus like that and blaspheme him, I will insult your God, who's a dog, who produced Muhammad the dog. I would spit on your God, but my spit is better than your God. I would piss on your God, but my urine is cleaner. But go ahead, brother. Someone just blasphemed Jesus. Okay. Um, so, yeah, John 10, verse 27 to 30. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of oh, my Father's hand. Did you catch it? No one can pluck them out of my hand. No one can pluck them out of my, fa of my Father's hand. Why? Because I and my Father are one. That's the context. Okay. So okay. he's saying, the reason why no one can deliver out of my hand and my father's hand is because father and I are one in our power and ability mm. to preserve all believers immortal and indestructible. Mm. Okay. So there it is Jesus saying he's one with the father in essence. He's one with the father as God because the power that Jesus has is the power that only God has. And we know the father has it because the father is God. But why would mm. the son have it if the son is not God? So notice he's not the father. Notice he is a man, but he's almighty like the father and can only do what God does. He does only what God can do because he is God in the flesh, though he's not the father. And the Jews who knew the Old Testament, the Jews who knew their Old Testament knew the language of the Old Testament, and they correctly reason he's a man claiming to be God, even though they were wrong for thinking he blasphemed in doing so. Because now read 31 to 33. John 10, 31 to 33. Okay. Um, from verse 31, it says, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you for my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Hmm. And because that thou being a man maketh thyself God. So the Jews who knew the Old Testament saw Jesus is a Jewish man. He's in front of us. It's a man. Yeah. But he just said the things that only the true God says and does. But he can't be God because God is not a man. So you, a man, make yourself out to be God. You must be blaspheming. And yet also they knew he wasn't claiming to be the father. Because hmm. he just claimed to be the father's son. 
but the father's son who's equal to the father in essence, which means he's just as much God as the father is, even though he's a man. So they were wrong, right. They were right in assuming he was claiming to be God, though a man, but they were wrong in thinking he was blaspheming. Okay. Because they knew okay. their Old Testament. So this is a passage where if you read the context, I and my father are one means we are one in our power and ability to preserve believers, which is a power that only belongs to God. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear? Yes, please. That's okay. very clear. You don't need to say please, brother. It's like you're saying yes, please. Like to a question. Uh, is that clear? <laughs> yes, please. Please make it clear. We already did. Any other questions on this or? Um, I, I have I have another question. Uh, this this is more on a personal take from my studies, yes. on my own Bible studies. Um, I was doing studies concerning you know the the passage that talked about the betrayal of Judas. Yes. Yes. I just was I just needed some clarity mm -hmm. because um when I read the gospels like the account in Matthew, Mark, and I believe Luke, all indicated that Judas kissed. I mean, when he was going yes, with the soldiers him. to meet Jesus, yes, he told the soldiers that he, the one he kisses, on it the will cheek, be him. That that will be Jesus. But then, when you read the account of John, mm -hmm. it rather says that the soldiers came and asked, "Which one of you is Jesus?" Sure. And Jesus. No, Jesus said, "Whom do you seek?" They didn't ask. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Whom do yeah, you whom seek? Is, Jesus of Nazareth. Seek? I am. So what's the so problem, I'm, brother? Yes. Yeah, so the question is. I, I don't know if it's a if I, I know that the scripture is consistent, but I'm yes. trying to see the consistency. Come on, brother. In, you you are an intelligent man. You know how I know you're intelligent? Do you know uh, how I know you're intelligent? Do you know how I know you're gonna go silent? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> how you know how I know you're intelligent? Um please okay. <laughs> how? Because you wear glasses. <laughs> See, anyone who wears glasses must be intelligent. Okay, brother, imagine the scenery. So this is why I tell people, put yourselves in the shoes of the people and live it out because these are historical events. You're telling me that Jesus is in a garden. It's pitch dark. Mm. The soldiers are coming stealthily because they don't want to come up on Jesus all of a sudden because they don't know if Jesus is going to take off. So mm. Judas gives them a signal. When I come, you're going to remain behind because it's dark. They don't have lights like we do. When okay. I kiss the person, you'll see from a distance the person I kiss run and, and, and grab him. Because when Judas comes, the disciples are not thinking Judas has soldiers. He's coming stealthily, oh. right? Okay. So as Judas comes to kiss him, then Jesus signals to them, whom do you seek? Where's the prophet? You come up to me and you kiss me and there's a crowd of, of, of police officers at a distance. And when you kiss me, I say, do you betray me with a kiss? Hey, guys, what do you want? Where's the no, problem? Okay. What's the problem there? I, I was, I was the, the, well, the problem was I was confused in, 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 because, I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was consistent i just knew in my heart that it was also consistent with john but i was failing to connect the dots no there. because you're not putting yourself in the situation and seeing okay. it as an actual event because in an actual event things happen if you're at a distance because again you're not in front of me so i can't show you like if you are at a, at a distance you're about 200 feet away and it's pitch dark in a garden and I come stealthily with a group of police officers. Yeah. And I tell them, hey, stay right here. I'm going to approach him. When I approach him and kiss him, come and rush on him. And then as I approach you and I yeah. kiss you, the soldiers are still behind. And as, or the policemen are behind. And I say, officers, whom do you seek? Where's the problem? Okay. If they're yeah, harmonious, a, not contradictory, awesome explanation. They're, if they're harmonious, not contradictory, then they're pieces of the puzzle. And then you're going to have to now create the situation. Oh, so they were hiding, waiting for the signal at a distance far enough where their presence wouldn't be recognized by the other disciples. Less panic arises and they they start attacking like Peter did when the soldiers came. Right. Okay. So yeah. Judas is trying to avoid that, and it's too dark to know who is Jesus in dark when they don't have 
what they call street lights. So he goes, kisses, and before they come and arrest him, then Jesus signals, whom do you seek? Letting them know that he's aware that they're there to arrest him. Why is he letting them know that? So then he can show his power that I can kill you dead with the words of my mouth. You couldn't get near me if it wasn't my will for you to arrest me. Because finish what John shows us. When he says, I am he, they fell back round, backwards to the ground. That's why Jesus did it. Okay. What was okay. Jesus trying to show them? What was he trying to show them? Uh, he was he was just trying to show them that that was Jesus. He Only? was the one that they were seeking for. Really? If I, you were here, I would sidekick you. You know that, right? I or you want a reverse punch? You want psychic? What happened when he said, I am he? You read John, right? What happened? They started dancing, doing jumping no, jacks? No, they, 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 fell, they, fell, they fell down. Okay, so let me ask the question again. Okay. Why did he identify himself? What did he want to show them? Um, he wanted to show them that he was the one they were looking for. You're going to repeat the same answer that was wrong the first time? You think the second time is going to be right? Mm, okay. No. Why did they fall backwards? Don't let me go talk to Butch right now. What was Jesus trying to show them when they fell backwards? Uh, Butch is about to come and bust your face. You know that, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm still trying to. Okay. When Jesus said, whom do you seek? They said, I, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. They yes. fell back backwards to the ground from the power of his words. What was he showing them when he said, I am he, and they fell backwards? Come on, guy. It's not hard. Uh, he was showing that he was God. How? What was he trying to display before their eyes? If by his words he knocked them over, what was he showing them? His authority. His you got it. Power. You got it. The authority to do what? What to authority? Do. To do what? Think about it, man. It's not hard. Don't get intimidated. I know I'm good looking and I'm scaring you. <laughs> um, the authority to command. For what reason? Work it with me. Come on. You can get it. What was he showing? Not only them, but you, the reader, that's reading it after the fact. That okay. by his okay. words, he knocked yeah. them backwards. He was showing what? That you cannot take my life from me. Okay, okay. Come okay, on, okay, man. Yes. Jami, yeah. hold on. Let me hit yeah. my head. Jami, that's it, man. I'm hitting my head against the wall. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on, buddy. You got it? <laughs> As I'm hitting my head against the wall and causing brain damage because of you, go to John 10, 17 to 18. Okay? okay. And as you go there, I'm going to say out of butch for a minute. Go to John 10, 17, 18. Here, kitty! 10, 10, 17, 18. Yes. Kitty! All right. Now go to John 10, 17, 18. Okay. John 10, verse 17 to 18. It says, um, Therefore doth my father love me. Because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Verse 18. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down my ah, I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. See that? Ah, the light switch went on, right, brother? Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. So <laughs> why did Jesus... At all. It, makes, it makes so much sense. Okay. Why did Jesus say, whom do you seek? Because he was showing them, I am God Almighty, and I control what happens. I'm in control of my own destiny, and I'm in control over your lives. If I wanted to, I can wipe you out by my words. Look, just by saying I am he... Boom! I knocked you backwards on your backs. Well, I, I honestly say I didn't think of it that way at all. Okay. It's, it's in, indeed a light switch has flipped up in my head. <laughs> so you see why the accounts are not contradictory. They are harmonious because it's pitch dark. Pitch dark. They don't have street lights. They don't want to come in all of a sudden because they don't know if Jesus is going to take off or whether his disciples are going to take out swords and start fighting and killing. So they want to be stealthily like Muslims do, jihad. They wanted to do 
Jewish jihad. Fi sabil Allah. Anyway, so Judas says, okay, if I come, the disciples won't be caught off guard and afraid because I'm one of them. They're going to see me. They'll be okay. So I'm going to come in stealthily and kiss him. The one I kiss because it's dark. They can't figure out which one of the men is Jesus. When it's pitch dark, how are you going to tell one guy from the next, right? Yeah. So when I kiss him, that's him. So now imagine the scene. That's why when I tell people, visualize these events because these are real events that really took place in history. So put yourself in that and see what it would look like, not just read it as words. So they're in this garden, and this garden is pretty big because it says that Jesus only took three disciples close enough to see what he was praying. The rest remain further afar off. So that means this is a pretty big garden, right? Yeah. Okay. Big enough that in the pitch dark you can get lost and not recognize people. That means the soldiers are now even further away at a great distance to give Jesus enough time that when Judas kisses him, he can say, Judas, betray the Son of Man with a kiss, and then look to the soldiers before they reach him and say, Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am. Boom! Knocks them down, showing them, if I want to kill you, I can. If I want to take your breath away, I can. If I want to stop you from a living, I can. Because I'm God and I'm in control, not you. But I'm allowing you to arrest me. You get it now? Yes, I do. Makes sense? I, I love you, brother. Just bear with me as I'm tough with you because I'm trying to shake the fear out of you. But I want yeah. you to say hi to my friend. This is Butch. <laughs> no, it's Butch. I, Why are you laughing, man? I'm pretty much all alone here, and I have imaginary friends. Butch is actually not only a Syrian. He's also Jilu like me. And mm -hmm. he gets angrier than me. So when he sees I'm upset, he gets upset because we're the same blood. So I want you to say something to make him happy. Say, mini abuch. Mini abuch. Okay, mini abuch. Mur a day? Mur a day? Agamini. Agamini. You got it. Now he loves you. He's your friend for life. I love him too. <laughs> All right. So now you got your answer? Yes, please. Uh, sorry, yes. Just say yes, man. Not yes, please, man. Yes, yes. All right, good. So uh, excellent questions, brother, because your questions helped everyone else. Now, does it all make sense? It is. It makes perfect sense. Um, you know, Mr. Mr. Shamon. I've, Call I've me Sam, dude. You make me feel old, dude. Ah, sorry, Sam. Sam. Um, I, I think I, I'm very appreciative. I mean, you shed so much light. Your explanations by inspiration of the Holy Ghost it's just, it's, it's just makes so much sense because there were some studies I've been doing that I've been struggling to piece it together, but you've been able to shed so much light. I'm very appreciative. Write down uh, all your questions, contacting yeah. me sometime tomorrow or next week. Let me know. Okay, say, so look, I have more questions. And I'll set up where you can answer, ask me so that others benefit from the questions because now everyone learned and benefited because of your questions and your willingness to allow me to answer you and even have fun by making you a little bit scared. But don't worry about it. I just do that because if you can pass the test of having me drill you, then you're ready to face anyone, my friend. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Now, by the way, you just called me, sir. I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to... I'm not going to ask how old are you, but I'm 49. Am I older than you? Yes, please, you are. Yes, please. So you're actually saying, please be older than me, please. <laughs> Eric, but I love you, brother. I'm sorry. It's a habit of mine. I'm, I'm no, so it's sorry. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, Sam. I love you, brother. I love you too, Sam. And you know what's the most important sorry, thing? I love you too, big brother. <laughs> All right, my little brother. But you know what's the most important thing? Jesus is in love with you, and Jesus is alive. And because he's alive, you will never die, but you'll live forever. And he'll never leave you. That's what's beautiful. Jesus is real. He's alive. And because he lives, we live. And he'll never leave you, but preserve you by his spirit for his glory. Because remember what he said. You're in his hand. And no one can ever pluck you out of his hand. And he will give you everlasting life. Because you're also in his father's hand. And the father and the son with the spirit will preserve you and all of us. Because our God is in love with us. And our God is real. And the Bible is his book. His voice to us. May we fall in love with that book and live it out for the glory of Jesus. So I love you, my brother. I love you too, big brother. Take care, brother. Call me. Let me know beforehand. Say, look, I got questions. We'll set up a meeting. Okay, sir. Lord bless okay, you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, please. You, God bless you. Lord bless you too. God bless you too. Take care. Bye.
Guys, I got to head out. Excellent crowd. We have over 430. Thank you, guys, for making the channel a success. Thank you for increasing our numbers. Pray for more numbers in Jesus' name. We had about 430. Glory to the triune God. Now, I'm going to retitle this, but the links to the articles are in the description box. They're there. Save them, study them, use them, and pass them on. Lord willing, I'll be on tomorrow. We're going to talk about Jesus, the Trinity, and Old Testament witness to the Trinity, and that the Messiah, who is Jesus, is God in the flesh, if the Lord wills. Look for that tomorrow. Look for that tomorrow. Excellent crowd. We had about 430. Lord, increase numbers for your glory. Purify our motives in Jesus' name that I never whore myself for fame or for money. Keep us in love with you, Lord Jesus. Keep us holy and to obey you and worship you, Lord Jesus. And illuminate us to know your word and live it, Lord Jesus. And please keep us healthy. Give me the health I need for as long as I need it until you summon me in your presence or return so that my health will not hinder me, but help me to glorify you, Lord Jesus. And bless my daughters, Lord Jesus. Keep them healthier than me. And if you tarry, may they grow up and outlive me. And I see that by your grace and mercy, Lord Jesus. Bless everyone here, Lord Jesus. Bless their loved ones and fill them with your love. Show them and remind them you are real. You are real. You live. You're not make-believe. And your Bible is alive. And because you live, we are alive. Do not allow us, allow me to betray you, deny you, or blaspheme your name. By your spirit, seal our mouths and our bodies. To love you and die for you, Son of God. We love you, Brunit Alaha, Son of God. We worship you. Have mercy on us, Son of David, virgin born Son of Mary. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Lord willing, pray for my health, my purity, holiness, my provision for support and my daughters. Lord Jesus willing, tomorrow, messianic prophecy. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Maranatha.